Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, we're going to find out what is the best beginner snake. Is it a hognose snake or is it a corn snake? Stick around. <laughs> If you're new into reptiles, or even if you have a bunch of reptiles already, and you're thinking to yourself, what's the next snake I should get, or what is the first snake I should get, here's some things you want to consider. If you're thinking about the difference between a hognose snake and a corn snake, it works out that they're actually pretty darn similar. And just a disclaimer for those of you who know about hognose snakes, there's several different species. I'm only talking about the western in this video. It's western hognose snake versus a corn snake. And just before we get in the meat and potatoes of this video, if you want to win a really cool prize from Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, wait to the end of the video. We have more details, but if you want to get started now, hit that subscribe button. So let's start out with the western hognose snake. This is a, a kind of a newer snake to the pet trade. I'm sure that we've been keeping them in captivity for a very long time, but when you go out and you see a bunch of different snakes at a reptile expo or a pet shop or even a reptile shop, you're going to see way more corn snakes than you're going to see hognose snakes. They're a little bit different. They're from uh, the kind of the middle of the continent. They go from Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Canada, and then all the way down at the bottom of the states um, from Arizona to Texas and everywhere in the middle. So they're kind of right in the middle of the continent. And then you've got your corn snake. Now, corn snakes, unlike hognose snakes, aren't really burrowing animals. You're going to find them in leaf litter in forested areas. These guys are from the eastern seaboard, the southern eastern seaboard, a little bit far west. Uh, when you go down south. So that's a little bit different of, of their area, but they are from the same continent. Uh, corn snakes, of course, can't tolerate the same degree of cool, the same degree of cold as a western hognose snake can, and they're not as far north. Now let's talk about size. Your corn snake and your hognose snake are going to be different sizes, sort of similar, but you're going to find a much shorter snake and a hognose snake. These guys, as males, only get to about a foot and a half, maybe. Even some are smaller than this. Of course, you can have bigger ones that get to about two feet, but then you're really pushing it. Where females, you're going to find them more two to three feet. So as a species, you're going to go anywhere from a foot and a half or to three feet on average. Uh, and of course, they're a, a more sturdy bodied snake. They're not crazy big, but because of their stoutness, they look a little bit thicker than a corn snake. For example, Hognose snake males, sometimes they only grow to 75 or 100 grams. Females, uh, 500 grams is a pretty big female. Where with corn snakes, you're going to find them between 4.5 and, and 6 feet in size. And of course, the same thing, males are smaller than the females. These guys are going to get a little bit heavier as well. But they look more slender because they are longer. These guys are constrictor snakes, and hognose snakes, they are not constrictors. We're going to get to that in a sec. So when it comes to size, I have to give this a tie. Uh, do you want a smaller snake or do you want a little bit larger of a snake? We're going to go one all. Now an obvious question that you're going to think to yourself is, how big of an enclosure do I want or how big of an enclosure do I have space for for this snake that I'm about to purchase? These are where they really are different, these two species. Hognose snakes, you're going to need a 20 gallon, 30 if you really want, but 20 gallon can house a, an adult hognose snake for its entire life, or the equivalent. I'm not saying that aquariums are the best solution. Um, so for example, in a tub system, you need a 28 quart. That would comfortably house a large adult female for its entire life. Whereas a corn snake, a corn snake is going to need a larger enclosure. They're going to need the equivalent of a 40 gallon once they become an adult. Or if you keep them in a, a tub system or something equivalent, you want a 41 quart tub instead. So they're going to take up more room in your house. And for that reason, I'm going to give this one to the hognose snake. Heat and humidity is another one of your primary concerns when you're thinking about taking care of a cold-blooded animal, such as any reptile, especially a snake. And these two snakes, although they're from different parts of the continent, are surprisingly similar. Let's start off with humidity. Your humidity level for both of these snakes is going to be very similar. Your hognose snake is going to be between 30 and 50% ideally, but you can get away with something as low as 25% and as something as high as 55%. Now these guys do come from the prairies, they come from the middle of the continent of course. So in Texas you're not going to see a ton of rainfall, usually it's a drier place, uh, of course season to season, but generally, and the same thing with the prairies, it's kind of a drier, flat type of area. Uh, where your corn snake, they come from the eastern seaboard. Now, if you read uh, the reptile report or any of these care guides, you're going to see that they suggest somewhere between 40 and 60%. I would say probably 35 and 55 is your best bet with a corn snake. They're very similar. Uh, probably tied right about now. But now let's get into the heat. 
this is what I think separates them a little bit. Now, if you know anything about the geography of where these snakes are from, uh, if you're going all the way north into Alberta and Saskatchewan and Manitoba, it gets really darn cold there, even in the southern portions of these provinces. And then in places like Texas, it doesn't really get that cold at all. It definitely doesn't get below freezing for most of the year. In typical years, it never gets below freezing in these parts of the, uh, the world, especially Arizona, where you'll find these type of snakes. So I'm going to say that because it's a little bit higher of a gradient, or a larger range of heat and humidity for a hognose snake, I'm going to say that I'm going to give this to the hognose snake. You can keep it a little, a little bit hotter, a little bit cooler. It's your preference, whatever it is that's best for your animal. But you're going to get away with a lot more with heat and humidity with a hognose snake than you are with a corn snake. And if you're keeping track, that means that we got our hognose snake at 3 and our corn snake at 1. Now let's talk about the diet of these animals and their feeding response. This is really important as well, especially if you're watching this because you're thinking, I want a snake, I don't have one or I don't have a lot. And part of the enjoyment of getting an animal, watch, especially a snake, is watching it eat every week. If this is important to you, there's a clear cut winner. So let's start between the two hognose snakes and corn snakes. They both eat basically the same size of animal once they get a little bit bigger. Now because males in the hognose family don't get as big as corn snakes, you might never actually get up to a full adult size mouse. You definitely probably won't get up to a medium sized rat, definitely not, and not even really a small rat either which of course is a uh, hot topic between hognose owners if you should ever feed mice because in the wild they don't eat a lot of rodents. That's neither here nor there. Corn snakes on the other hand, once they get to adult size, which they do a little bit quicker than the hognose snake, you're going to be able to feed them um, small rats or large mice, uh, extra large mice as well. Now my girl Maisie here, who isn't even full size, she, just to give you an idea of how big Maisie is, this is her shed. So I would say that this snake is probably three and a half feet. And from what I understand, she's only about between a year and a half and two years old. Whereas my hognose girl Ekans here is a full grown three year old female. She pumped out some eggs for me this year. I know she's sexually mature and I got her when she was just a baby. There is quite a big size difference. And because of the body size, there's a size difference in the feeders that you'll feed them as well. Now here's what really separates them apart. What really separates them is that hognose snakes are the ball pythons of the colubrid world in my opinion. And what I mean by that is, they go on hunger strikes. Sometimes your hog nose is really hard to get to eat when it's a baby, and that's when it's most affordable of course as well, so if you're getting a new snake, you might be getting a baby. And then corn snakes are vivacious eaters, is that the right word? I don't know. Where corn snakes are vigorous eaters, they will eat very eagerly. Now hog nose can be eager eaters as well. In fact, the only time Ekans has ever given me any trouble eating is right before she laid her clutch of eggs, which is a normal breeding response. So because this is a best beginner snake edition and it's easier to get a snake that will eat all the time and usually have no issues, I'm going to give this one to the corn snake and if you're keeping track, that means that hog nose snake, three points, and corn snake, only two. So now you know how big the snakes are going to get, you know how big of an enclosure you need, you have the food in the freezer, frozen thawed all the way, by the way, uh, both of these snakes will eat frozen thawed pretty easily. The next thing you want to know, what's it like to handle them? What is the behavior of each one of these snakes like? They're very different, in my opinion. I think that uh, hognose snakes, they're a little bit derpy, they're pretty slow, they're not crazy quick moving, whereas a corn snake is going to be a lot faster, a lot flightier, especially if you don't work with it. Now both snakes, if you work with them, will of course get rid of their weird traits like flightiness or in hognose snakes, which is really interesting. They will false strike at you. They are known for being hissy, little bratty. Uh, they're different than any other snake. No other snake that I know of will just strike at you with a closed mouth. And because they have that cute little upturned snout, it feels very weird when they headbutt you with their mouth. So I think the main difference is hognose snake is going to be a little bit slower. Corn snake's going to be a little bit faster. Your hognose snake is less likely to bite than a corn, a corn snake, in my opinion. In the wild, hognose snakes will actually play dead rather than bite you, where a corn snake will first try to fly away, and then it'll bite you. It doesn't do the very cute laying on its side playing dead thing. And then I think the size has to be factored in this as well, because if you're trying to wrangle a six-foot snake in comparison to a three-foot snake, it's a little bit easier to wrangle the smaller snake. So for this reason, and also because your hognose snake will be out during the day, because it is a more diurnal snake, corn snakes can be as well. They're technically crepuscular, meaning that they're out during dawn and dusk, but I've seen mine out during the day all the time. 
I would say that it just, if you're getting enjoyment out of your snake during the day and out of handling, your hognose snake wins this round. And that means if you're keeping track, that we're at four for the hognose snake and only two for the corn snake. So we've got two categories left. Let's find out if the corn snake can catch up to the hognose snake. Here's the next category, cost and availability. This is really important because everything we've talked about means nothing if you can't find or afford either one of these snakes. The good news is you can find them both. They're not super hard to find and they're not super expensive, either one of them either. There is a clear winner though. Hognose snakes on one hand, uh, While well, they're a little bit more expensive and they're a little bit harder to find. If you go to a reptile expo or even a regular pet store, PetSmart for example, Petco, I don't suggest you ever buy from these places, just using them as an example. Or some place that you should buy, like a reputable reptile store, you'll find corn snakes in every single one of them. If they sell snakes, they'll likely sell corn snakes and ball pythons for sure. Uh, you're not going to find hognose snakes as readily available. And then price. So which one's more expensive? Well, you'd think the one that's harder to find is more expensive, and that a lot of the time is true. Buying a corn snake for 40 bucks is pretty darn easy to find. Buying a hognose snake for 40 bucks is almost unheard of. The first hognose snake that I ever bought was $125, just a normal baby. We're talking like three weeks out of the egg, barely had a few meals into her. Just a normal, no genes whatsoever. Now, corn snakes, regular ones, they're basically throwaway animals. I hate using that term but that's the way that breeders sometimes treat them. You can buy them for 20 bucks all day long, uh, and then we're gonna get an amorphs in a second. So I think we can wrap this up. It's easier to find a corn snake, and it's a lot cheaper to find a corn snake. We're gonna give this one to the corn snake, which means that we're now at four to three. All right, let's wrap this baby up. Are we gonna have a tie, or are we gonna have a clear-cut winner here? The last category is morphs, because if you want to display animal, I think it's important what it looks like. Of course, obviously, that's if you're getting a, a new reptile, you're going to look at it a lot. You're going to be fascinated with it, even if you've had reptiles forever and you have a ton of them. What the reptile looks like is important. And I think here there's a clear-cut winner because we're going to go with what can you find, how many of them are there, and what is the most beautiful. And with hognose snakes, they're newer into the, the reptile hobby, or at least into the mass breeding hobby of creating all these different morphs. I think it was just the 90s when we found our first albino hognose snake on a golf course somewhere. I think in Arizona is where they found it. So uh, this is pretty new, whereas corn snakes have been bred and have all sorts of morphs for years and years and years, for decades. So it's really easy to find these crazy different morphs for corn snakes. And they're really cheap as well. Whereas a hognose snake, if you want to get just something as simple, or well, I say simple, but really it's beautiful as well, as a albino, which is kind of your most typical type of hognose snake morph that you can find, these guys are going to set you back 250 300 bucks in my area. I'm not sure different parts of the states are probably a little bit cheaper. And if you want to get into crazier stuff, things like your anacondas, supercondas, we're talking close to $1,000. Arctics are going for over 1000 If you want to mix some recessive genes with some co-dominant genes, uh, you know, if you get a an albino conda, for example, you're going to be setting back 1500 bucks, at least where I live. Where with a corn snake, you can buy a completely scaleless corn snake that has a crazy morph in it for 650 bucks here. So they're a lot cheaper, they're a lot easier to find, there's way more morphs available. So that means that if you've been keeping score, we're tied. We got a four all uh, best beginner snake challenge. So we can't just leave it as a tie. I want to give you a definitive answer, or at least my biased opinion. And if you notice how many of each snake I have in my racks, you might know the answer to this. Your, your tiebreaker category, I think we're going to go with wow factor or cool factor. Now, of course, this is a subjective thing because for you, a corn snake might be cooler because I like the, the patterns or it's scaleless or whatever, or a hog nose. It's got an upturned snout, for example. I just think that a uh, hog nose is a little bit cooler. I think this is going to be our tiebreaker because it's got that upturned snout, it looks completely different, it doesn't get as big, it's very unique, you can keep it in a broad range of humidity levels and temperatures as well, as long as you're staying within the guidelines of course, and if you want to know how to keep either one of these snakes, your hognose snake video is up here. So I think that this is really the tiebreaker. And another thing that we didn't talk about, although your corn snake is more likely to bite you in my opinion, your hognose snake, if it does bite you, might leave you a little bit of a present. And by present, I mean uh, you might be <laughs> having a very swollen hand. And that's because they are technically rear fang venomous. I know people will say, no, they're not. Yes, they are. At the end of the day, they have an advanced saliva that if they do get a hold of you with their rear fangs, which is different than a corn snake, 
they do have a mild toxin. Uh, if you want to call it a venom, that's up to you. Uh, that is what a lot of people will call it. And because of this, you can get a reaction, kind of like a bee sting. Some people, if you know you have a sensitivity to it, your hand and your arm will swell up, but that's how they get their prey. Whereas a constrictor type snake, like a corn snake, will coil around it and then swallow it whole. Your hognose snake, which eats things like amphibians in the wild, they're gonna use those two teeth to pop toads as they blow up so that they get too big to swallow for our normal snake. And then they kind of envenom envenomate them and that's how they subdue their prey rather than wrapping them up. Which is another thing about behavior too because a uh, hognose snake isn't going to hold on to you quite like a corn snake will because they don't have the same sort of development uh, or the same type of behavior in their muscular structure because they don't need to constrict their prey. So there you have it. This is of course a biased opinion. I just, the hognose snake was my first snake. So I, I have a little bit of a soft spot for them. But if you look at it on paper, I think that's a tie. If you look at it as what is the best starter snake in my opinion, five points for the hognose snakes, four points for the corn snakes. And that means that in my opinion, best beginner snake in this challenge goes to the Western hognose snake. Thanks for coming back and watching this episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. If you like videos like this, Put it in the comment below, hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And of course, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have a little bit of a contest going on. If you want this green WWR shirt, a new one, not the stinky one that I've been wearing here, we're going to go ahead and give that away. As soon as I hit 600 subscribers, I'm going to take the names of everybody who comments on this video right here, and we're going to put it into a draw, draw it, and if you win, send me your mailing address, and then I'll send you the shirt free of charge with a little thank you note as well. So because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.